Hello! In this video, we are going to learn about recursion. We are going to learn about what recursion is, how to do it, and why it is useful. This video is also part of a series. You'll get a lot more out of this video if you have watched the previous episodes in the series first. You can find them there. So what is recursion? Recursion is when a function calls itself until it doesn't. That is seriously all that recursion is. Recursion is when a function calls itself until it doesn't. A lot of people think recursion is hard, and the reason that people think that recursion is hard is that because of some collective insanity, all explanations of recursion on the internet uses Fibonacci numbers as an example. The only reason a non-mathematician would have heard about Fibonacci numbers is if they would have watched the TV series Fringe. When somebody tries to explain recursion to you using Fibonacci numbers, you must murder them. I know that sounds rough because they, uh, they might be your friend and they, they, they only mean well, but they must die. Let me draw your attention to the code. We are going to implement this method, count down from. It should, uh, in this case, we're counting down from 10, so it should just output 10, 9, 8, and then so forth until, uh, until 1. It stops. We are going to implement this using recursion. I'm going to start by declaring the function. Let count down from. It takes an argument, a number, and there's the function. This is ECMAScript 6. You might be watching this from the near future where this is completely normal to you. But in current time, I've had some audience requests to write things in uh, ECMAScript 5 instead. Normally, I listen to audience feedback because I love you guys. But because I love you guys, I won't listen to this one. Because I love you, I want to pressure you to become better. And this is one situation where I won't go easy on you. ECMAScript 6 has been finalized for over a year now. It's time to get into it. It's really simple if you just use Babel. npm install g Babel. Elevator music. Done. Clearing. And now you can run Babel node. Example yes. Okay, that doesn't output anything. Let me console log. This is my standard string to output. Run that again, and we have poop. So quick ECMAScript 6 crash course, let is just the new var, you should always use let instead of var. Arrow functions is just a shorter function syntax. Poop is cool, but uh, let's instead output the number. Run that. Okay, 10. So far, countdown from is a function that takes a number and starts counting down from. And that is kind of what counting down is. You take a number, say it, and then you take that number you just said, minus one, and you say that, and so on until you run out. So... Num minus one. Let's run that. Why, thank you, computer, for counting down to uh, minus 15,000. If we scroll back up uh, into infinity, okay, yeah, somewhere here. Uh, yeah, here. So you see that it works, but we don't have any stop condition. We're gonna fix that, but I wanna draw your attention to a little thing called here, a maximum call stack size exceeded. The call stack is the stack of function calls that your code has made. And in uh, most non-functional programming languages, there is a uh, upper limit to how far you can go. Functional programming languages never have this limit because you use recursion for everything and then you can't have this limit. JavaScript has this limitation in ECMAScript 5, but it is removed in uh, ECMAScript 6 even though that Babel can't simulate it because it's an engine thing. And this is why ECMAScript 6 is so interesting from a functional programming perspective, because it removes one of the main limitations to doing functional programming with JavaScript. This feature is called tail call optimization, by the way, because it's this big tail of function calls. 
Let's add that stop condition. If num was zero, return. Right, so it just goes through time 10, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1, and when it logs out 1 here and here, it will proceed to this line and then it will take number 1 minus 1 and it will pass 0 into counter from, which goes into this. This is 0 now, we'll see that and it will return and thus it won't go to 0 and minus 1 and minus 2 and so forth until 60 minus 15,000. And that is recursion, a function that calls itself until it doesn't here on line 2. We have learned what recursion is and uh, a simple example of how to do it but it's still not clear why you would. Looking at the example that we just did, we, we could have done this with just a loop, right? And yes, you could have. Every time you do a loop, you can use recursion instead. But it doesn't work the other way around, because there aren't things that recursion can do that loops cannot. The first time I had to use recursion, was when I encountered a problem that looked a little bit like this. So we had a database, a relational database, which had these categories. So uh, there was top categories, like this animals category here, uh, and the top categories did not have a parent, uh, they just had no, the root categories. Under animals there are categories like mammals, if you see here that the, uh, the mammals uh, category has animals as, uh, as parents. And we have categories that uh, have mammals as uh, parents, with cats and dogs. And in turn there's Chihuahua and Labrador which has dogs as parent category. Also cats here, Persian, Siamese, so you see that these are the same here. Persian is a subcategory of cats. At this time it was really cool with uh, these hierarchical uh, DHTML menus. You know menus that work sort of like the Windows Start menu where you hover a folder and when you do it expands into that folder and then you hover a subfolder of that and that expands into a new subfolder and so on. So I wanted to represent this database as, as that. So in order to represent that, we need to uh, make this into a tree structure and pass to the DHTML menu. We want an output that looks something like this. Boom. So this is a tree structure. Uh, animals contains another tree uh, with mammals here. Uh, and the mammals contains uh, uh, two, a tree with two properties, dogs and cats. Uh, and these in turn have uh, uh, Chihuahua and Labrador, we don't really need the quotes here, I think. Uh, and uh, since they don't have any subcategories, they just have, uh, I have null. Let's comment that out, yes, because this is just to remember uh, where we're going. This is, by the way, a good trick whenever you're programming to always, uh, always think about what what it is you're doing, what is my end goal, instead of just starting to code. I think one of the most common uh, mistakes in programming is to start coding too early. Take some time to think about your problem and where you're going and that will save you a lot of time. Scrolling up a bit and uh, we will console out uh, make tree categories. Okay. Run that. Oh, okay. I made a mistake in my example data here. It is supposed to be an array. I've forgotten the first curly bracket there. Good error here. Make tree is not a fun. Yes, we have to define make tree. Let make tree be a function. Undefined, yeah, because make tree doesn't return anything. So we just return. Uh, uh, start by returning an empty object. 
so now we want to start uh, assigning the, the sub properties here. We want to create this animals thing. To do that, we need to break this out into a variable so that we can uh, manipulate. We are gonna call this. Hmm, what are we gonna call it? We're gonna call it node. Uh, parts of a tree are called nodes in computer science. Where are we getting our categories from? We are getting them here as a into the function and we are now going to uh, uh, filter the uh, categories array uh, we are looking for the, um, the top one We're looking for the root element all right so this will now be a, uh, a an, an array of uh, the, uh, the categories that has parent parent null and at this moment it will it will just be this because it has filtered out all of the others because they don't have parent null for each such category we are going to take the id of the category which in this case in this first loop is going to be uh, animals here so the id here is animal and we're going to assign that to the node it's the same thing here right it's this uh, and that is now going to get the subtree uh, and we're gonna make that by calling make tree recursively and it's gonna get the same categories Let's put this on a new line but it's not gonna get the same parent it's going to get the ID as a parent. Let's run that. Okay, that is maybe the right result. Uh, it's a bit messy. Let me just... This is the best trick ever. JSON stringify and then you add as a second argument to stringify you take null and you take two and two is for indentations and null is for magic thing. And I go and now we have a nice tree and it's pretty much what we want we're still not here with the uh, the objects but that's not that important let's walk through what just happened so in the first loop when we call make tree we are passing in categories here uh, categories is going to be all of the categories and we're going to filter them here uh, and we're going to filter out the ones that have the same parent as the one we passed in here. Uh, and that is the same thing as uh, what we passed in here. So now it's the root. Uh, and for every such category, we are going to uh, for each it. And in this for each, this it's a bit clear. We're going to unsign a property on the node with the same ID as each category. We have animals here. I'm gonna assign this node, animal, here, with the return value of ourselves. But this time, we are not passing in null as the parent category. We are passing in animals here. So now we are making a tree with uh, the categories that have uh, animals as a property. And they, in turn, will call make tree and make trees that has uh, mammals as a uh, parent category. And they, in turn, will call make tree with uh, uh, cats and dogs, making trees that include Chihuahua and Labrador. And this could just go on and on and on, but it ends because it runs out of things to make trees of. And to a certain degree, you could do this with uh, with loops. You could do nested for loops, like uh, the outer for loop has uh, i as an integer, and then the inner for loop has j, and you go in and in and in until you uh, run out of, of, of consonants or sanity. But that only works if it's a very limited amount of nesting. Sometimes you need to make trees that are 100 levels deep, and then you just can't use loops. And that's recursion! We have learned that uh, recursion is just a uh, function that calls itself until it doesn't. 
we've looked at an example of how to use it to count down from 10. And we have looked at an example of why you need recursion, why you can't solve everything with loops. I am the one recording this show, but it is the audience that makes a show. I need to hear from you, either at MPJ, me, on Twitter, or a YouTube comment down below. Comment with a uh, reflection or, or a question or something that you're confused about or something funny or nice. Or what you would like the next episode to be about. Speaking of which, do not miss that next episode. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Do it now. Or follow me on Twitter. Until next Monday, stay curious.